I was blessed um, to have great grandparents. And it's probably hard to say were any of them favourites because they're all, you know, favourites. But my grandpa Sheriff, who was my mother's father, uh, he in particular was a favourite. And I, I was fortunate as a child, we lived just short of a mile from my grandparents' house. And so often, particularly when I was, you know, in the just under 10, around, around that sort of years, I'd often, you know, stop off to my gran at my grandparents' house. And Grandpa Sheriff was six foot four. And it seemed like he had hands that were so big, you know, it was just incredible. And I, I often was intimidated just by his sheer presence. And because he worked in, a, in physical work, he was a farm originally, then he was, a, he was a horse breaker and he did all sorts of physical stuff and he was working um, right up um, till his death at age 76, he was still doing physical work. So he's a very imposing man. And if you, even if you came into um, his, his home, if you didn't know him, you were kind of shocked. He was a big, imposing kind of a guy. And I tell you, when Grandpa spoke, he had this big, booming voice as well. When Grandpa spoke, we all listened. But often he could be very gentle at the same time. And one day I decided because I, I knew that this, um, something was coming. Um, my grandparents would often take me to the horse jumping because grand, Grandpa was into horses um, all of his life. And we'd often, get, as a boy, I'd often go to the horse jumps. And I knew this was coming up this, you know, the particular weekend on the Friday. And I just thought, I'll, I'll, rather than going straight home from school, I'll, I'll duck past because I know Grandpa's going to be home. And when I, when I walk around the back, Grandpa's out in the garden. Being a farmer, he, he loved to tend his garden. And as I, I said hi, and we, I sat down in the, in, the, in the veggie patch with him, actually. And we kind of just, you know, we, we did grandpa, grandson stuff. And he says to me, he just looks at me. He says, you know what? Life's a lot like the farm. Life's a lot like the garden. I'm 13 years old. He says, life's often hard. You know, you, you have to start with fertile ground. He kind of picked up a bit of dirt. And he said, now this is where things start. It's in the fertile ground. He said, and then you, once you get the ground ready and you cultivate it, you have to be really careful. You know, you, you plough it right, you know, and you, you, and you have to be really careful that you put the seeds in at the right time. And when the seeds are in, you have to nurture it. He says, he says, life's like this, you know, son. He said, you know, life's about the fertile ground. Life's about plowing that ground. Life's about seeing that ground and it's about nurturing it. And he said, and then you get a harvest. He said, I've met so many people in my life that just want the harvest. And they're not prepared to find the fertile ground. They're not prepared to plow it properly. They're not prepared to seed it. They get impatient. They don't nurture it. And he said, and he, at that moment, he pulled a flower out. And he said, you know what? He said, I, I, this, I, I had to care for this flower all the way along this journey. I had to get the ground ready. I had to plow it right. I had to seed it properly. I had to nurture it. I had to take care of it. And then the flower. And he says to me, life's like this. Never forget it. No matter how long you live, never forget this. <coughs> I haven't. <coughs> Grandpa died just a few weeks after that. And so I added these things to the equation. I built on what my father taught me. You have to be mentally alert, physically active, spiritually alive. I added emotionally healthy and universally aware, and then I put grandpa's bits in. And I've learned in my life that life is a journey. And if you don't follow this law of life, as grandpa called it, the law of the farm, because some people, what they want to do is they want to rush on, get this outcome. You know, we want that sale today. We want this Think, think that we don't want this, you know, we want to get to this space today. And what we don't do is we don't go right back to the start and get the fertile ground and plough it properly and nurture it 
seed it, you know, because then the harvest comes. Now, I meet lots of people who just want the outcome. I meet lots of business owners and business leaders. What they want is the bottom line. They want profit. Well, I'm here to tell you, profit's not a reason for being in business. Sorry to disappoint you. Profit's not a reason. It's a result. And so many people are confused between the result, the harvest, rather than the reason. And the reason, if you want to grow a pretty flower, if you want to grow a veggie patch, if you want to grow anything, including people, you have to start with the, with the fertile ground. And then you plough it and you seed it and you nurture it. And then you get a harvest. And sometimes you've got to be patient. And sometimes it rains when it's not supposed to. Sometimes it doesn't rain when it's supposed to. And sometimes there's all sorts of issues around the fertile ground, the ploughing and the seeding and the nurturing. But in my 58 years on this earth, if I've learned anything, it's that harvest comes after work. You've got to do the work. You can't just all of a sudden go from nothing to a harvest. You've got to do the work. And you've got to do your own work, your own unique work. And what I learned off my grandfather, both my grandfathers, I'll never forget grandfather on my father's side, when he was 80 years old, he could sw swing an axe and split wood like you wouldn't believe. You know, he, he'd pick up the axe and when he swung it through the air, there was a whistle. And when it came down and wood went over, I, you know, my brother and I we used to be amazed. What I learned from them is that's a part of this physical, physical thing. You know, there's work to do. Now, I meet a lot of lazy people. I don't know about you, but I meet a lot of lazy people. They're happy being miserable and mediocre. They're often lazy. And sometimes as leaders, we want to grab them by the scruff of the neck and take them. We want to drag them from, from over there to being happy, being magnificent. Well, you can't drag. You have to nurture. You have to be a role model. You have to show. You can't tell. You have to lead. You, you can't manage people. You have to lead them. Management's about systems and processes. You have to inspire them. But if you take people on this journey from, you know, rawness, the rawness of a fertile ground, and you, and you treat them properly, and you plant good things in their, in their minds, and you help them to see their own magnificence, and you nurture them, we end up with people being happy, being magnificent. 